Welcome back, guys. Um, so remember what I said about not liking filming in the same location more than once? Today, I'm seated on my bed, and it's a bunk bed, so my head is currently hitting the top of the bed frame. So as I'm sure many of you know, the Retroid Pocket 3 was released just two months ago, and I actually bought one. I had been eyeing the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus for a few years now, ever since it released. Actually, not a few years, because I'm pretty sure it released just back in January. But I'd been eyeing it. Wondering if I should buy it or not, debating with myself whether I should buy it or not. And I waited too long and then rumors started piling up about the Pocket 3. So that didn't really hurt the debate though. It still kept going on and I actually ended up buying one after I got my Retroid Pocket 3. I'm not entirely sure why. I think it was just late at night and I was tired and I wanted to waste some money. But I'm outside of my return period now and I'm not really going to use this. So I guess I just have it now. It'll be nice for comparisons, but... I don't really think I need it. But remember back in January when I made a video talking about the portable emulators I was excited to see come out this year? The Retroid Pocket 3 was one of those devices that I discussed, and the leaked specs and like dimensions that I showed are basically what's in this device. So I, I don't know, I just thought that was pretty cool. And it may be nothing more than a simple hardware upgrade from the 2 plus but oh boy is this thing amazing <laughs> before i fully jump into this just keep in mind if i do say anything negative about the device in terms of its power and performance that it retails at 120 dollars or 130 dollars if you want an extra gig of ram so some of its shortcomings can be attributed to that low price tag and the low specs inside of it but that aside i really do like this device and i'll discuss a bunch of it more in this video but if you want the tldr of this video i really like this thing all right let's be a little honest here with each other i haven't been using this thing much since i got my steam deck i know that these things serve two totally different purposes and that i shouldn't really be talking about them in the same video because there's really no purpose to it but ever since i got my steam deck if i've wanted to play a 3D game or something like that. I've played it on this and even 2D games like Celeste that don't run on the Retroid Pocket 3, I've played them on the Steam Deck. And I know it's not really fair to compare the two, but I think the reason why I've just preferred the Steam Deck more than the Retroid Pocket 3 and like even the Odin is because of the game preferences I have. Like I've always just preferred 3D games to 2D games. And since the Retroid Pocket 3 is more so geared towards 2D gaming and like NES, SNES, N64 type gaming, I would prefer something more powerful. That doesn't really hurt my perception of the device, it just more so hurts the devices I use. Because I grew up with a weird obsession with the GameCube and Luigi's Mansion, so I've always had this nostalgia for that, even though I was born like the year the Wii came out in certain territories. So I've always just had a weird connection to 3D gaming compared to 2D gaming. And even like the N64, some of those games are a little too like 2D focused for me, but I do really enjoy 2D games. I just prefer 3D gaming. So any of the other devices that are more powerful than this, I've probably used more. I've definitely gotten over my 2D kind of like hesitancy because I have played games like Celeste and Cuphead and really enjoyed them and 2D games can work and they're a lot of fun. It's just that I've always had a preference for 3D games and I feel like that preference has kind of hurt these kind of lower end devices in my eyes. That doesn't mean I really dislike them though. But in my unboxing video of this thing, I did compare it to the Pal Kitty RGB 10 Max because he kind of has the same form factor. They stole that design from Ambernet, but that doesn't really matter. The difference between this and something like a device from Pow Kitty is that this thing doesn't come with any ROMs. You have to supply the ROMs yourself, which is fine and honestly much more illegal. But at the same time, if you're a noob and you're just getting into this device and this ecosystem, you're probably going to stumble across a ROM site that isn't safe and download a ROM from there that actually turns out to be a virus or install something onto your computer while trying to install, which is not good but i prefer this way just because it is more legal and it honestly turned out to be a better device than the pal kitty device so i'm not complaining i laid out the specs of this thing in my full review so i'm not really going to go over them here but just know this thing is more of a hardware upgrade from the 2 plus than a software or like power upgrade i kind of feel like they were planning on releasing the pocket 3 a while ago but just uh for some reason didn't 
and release the 2 plus instead not realizing that that would kind of make the 3 more of a hardware upgrade more than anything which is not a bad thing but they claim that the 3 has a 20 to 30 percent performance upgrade through android 11 compared to android 9 but through everything i've tested on both of these devices there doesn't seem to be much of a difference so it's more of a hardware upgrade than anything let's go over what i like about this thing i really like the ergonomics of this device it's no odin it doesn't have any of these like ergonomic grips on the back but for a small portable console it's very well designed the round edges and the thin body make it very comfortable to hold and use for long periods of time i imagine they got like i said this design from those Amronic devices like a bunch of companies have but that doesn't really take away from the design of this. It's really comfortable. The back is a little slippery and not very, like it's not easy to grip, which I can see being a problem for some people, because like I said, it's hard to get a good grip on it, but that hasn't been a problem for me, like at all using this device. The buttons on the Pocket 3 feel much better than the ones on the 2 Plus, because on the 2 Plus, there's a, like, a bunch of resistance before pressing down the button, and when you actually do, it doesn't like click in any satisfying way. It kind of feels like you're just pressing on like rubber or something because it is like a rubber membrane. But on the three, there's no resistance when you're pushing it down if just a little. So you don't like press it just by pushing it or by touching it. And when you do, there is a nice satisfying click. They actually feel like proper buttons. I was gonna say that I think the Pocket 3 joysticks are the same as the ones on the 2 Plus, but now that I'm looking at it, I don't think that's true. The ones on the 2 Plus look a lot like Nintendo Switch joysticks, while the ones on the 3 look like knockoffs, like the ones that came with the Odin. The right stick that was kind of like just a swivel stick on the 2 Plus that I really hate is now just a normal right stick, like um, it is on the left side, which is nice, but I just don't understand this kind of hardware downgrade considering it's like the only hardware downgrade on this entire system but it's not that important i guess the d-pad on this thing feels really nice to use it does remind me of the odin d-pad like i said in my unboxing video but it's nice to use it's clicky it's responsive compared to something like the two pluses d-pad which feels mushy and like not a good d-pad it's just nicer on the three that's going to be a theme for everything hardware related on this device also now that we're on the topic of the d-pad this thing, having it up, up here makes a lot more sense in the grand scheme of things, considering this thing is geared towards 2D gaming. So having the D-pad up at the top where your thumb will naturally rest makes a lot more sense than on the 2 Plus where the joystick is up here. It doesn't make sense. It's like the RGB 10S where the D-pad was on the bottom, which made no sense because that was even less powerful than this. I know there's more space underneath the D-pad on the 2 Plus, so it kind of makes up for the lack of D-pad in the correct spot, but why? We can all admit that the placement on the 3 makes a lot more sense than on the 2 Plus, considering the consoles it can emulate. I thought the shoulder buttons were the same when I like first got them, but it turns out I was very wrong. These shoulder buttons are sleeker, travel better, and like feel nicer, while the ones on the 2 Plus are more stiff, don't feel very nice and don't travel very far and they're just buttons which i guess is the same on the two plus i mean on the three but this just feels much nicer the function buttons on the side and top are the same it's still weird to me how they made the volume button on the side and the start and select on top i don't know i guess it's to keep the device slick or sleek but it still doesn't make sense to me the whole thing is a big hardware upgrade compared to the two plus but if there's one thing that's the most noticeable between the two, it's probably the screen. Now, when I first got the screen, I was like, it looks great because it does. 750p at 4.7 inches is great. It's not like the most amazing, but like you want to get a 1080p at 4.7 inch screen? I think not. But when I got the Pocket 2 Plus in, the Retro Pocket 2 Plus, I looked at the screen and I was like, oh my god, this is such a big upgrade. <laughs> Looking at the 3 compared to the 2 Plus is like night and day. I understand them putting a 480p screen in the 2 Plus, especially since the screen is only 3.5 inches, but wow, does the 3 Plus look a lot better. It's weird because I know the N64 only outputs at 240p or 480i, which should mean that this shouldn't make much of a difference, but looking at the 2 Plus compared to the 3, the colors are a lot brighter, the pixels look a lot better, and everything just overall looks nicer, which is weird. I guess not, because it's a 720p display and it's kind of upscaling, but at the same time, 
it just looks really nice <laughs> even just looking at the two plus without the three for reference you can see you can very clearly see the pixels you can clearly see some weird colors like mario and the like the kind of like environment and like the entire environment that he's in it's all very dull on the two plus but compared to the three where it's very bright and very nice where i like it a lot more <laughs> before we get into emulation i kind of just want to comment on the speakers because i don't really test the speakers out in videos because i don't really listen to the game audio all that much but i can just say just by listening to it right now the pocket three sounds a lot better here's a little audio test like showing the difference I'm not sure what it entirely is that I noticed that's different. I think I just feel like the audio is more condensed in the 2 Plus compared to the 3. Like how it's fit, fit, f fitted in such a small form factor where the 3 Plus kind of gives him more room to breathe with the speakers and stuff like that. So I guess it just doesn't sound as like condensed. I don't know. I'm no audio expert. So in terms of emulation, if you already have a 2 Plus, you're not really gonna see a difference. Like people claim that the 2 Plus could play 3DS or GameCube games if you like put it at 0.5 resolution, which the 3 can kind of do, the 2 Plus really can't. I'm not sure you're gonna notice much of a difference if you already have a 2 Plus, but the emulation is good. Anything up to N64 and DS in terms of uh, Nintendo and like PSP, I think if you do some tweaks, Anything like that will work really well. But yeah, emulation on this is really good for all the retro consoles aside from GameCube. Because GameCube is retro now. I can't believe that. Like, I wasn't even alive for it, but it's still, still kind of weird. It also kind of just shows that it's great why the D-pad is where it is, because I can't even play GameCube, and it's built for 2D games. I played almost the entirety of Paper Mario on this thing, and I play a lot of, like, SNES and Game Boy games on here, and it worked phenomenal. It was very responsive and it played really well, which again, it makes more sense now why the D-pad is where it is. And it even feels nice when you're playing something like Paper Mario that usually uses the D-pad, I mean the joysticks, because they're kind of positioned, like even if you kind of have big hands, they're kind of like, they're, they're, they feel nice, even if they are a little cheap. So overall, this thing was much more of a software overhaul, more than a hardware overhaul, and I'm completely fine with that. I don't know how I messed that up. I meant to say it's more of a hardware overhaul than a software overhaul. Because it is. It's the same exact software as the 2 Plus. That's what I meant. For $120 or $130 if you want an extra gig of RAM, it's a really nice, like, kind of entry level portable emulator to have if you don't have any others. If you already have a 2 Plus, I would ask yourself if the bigger screen and the better screen, the better ergonomics, and the kind of just better design overall really make a difference to you because if you're fine with, you, with what you currently have, I'm not sure you really need to upgrade. But if you don't have a device yet or you want like to get this upgrade, I would totally go for it. You're not gonna see much of a hardware boost, I mean a software boost, but the hardware makes up for it. Unless you wanna play GameCube games or 3DS games, you're not gonna be disappointed with this device. All right, that's really all I wanted to say about this thing. Two months later, I really enjoy it. Are you planning on buying one? Do you have any questions that you want to have answered before you buy one? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll answer it to the best of my abilities. Thank you for watching. Comment, like, and, like, and subscribe. I hate saying that, that's why I failed at saying it the first time. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.